559. Welcome. So do we reorganize first? Should, yeah. Okay, before public? Yeah, I think we have just the agenda wasn't written up to include the cemetery uh, townwide mowing. Recording in progress. So we'll do that after organizational to continue what was supposed to happen in the last meeting. Okay. Okay, so we need to nominate a new chair since Brian is leaving us, has left us. <laughs> do I have any nominations? For Savannah. Chair? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're in the new college <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> sure. yeah. I'll nominate Susan. <laughs> I told you that was about that. <laughs> so you get the flavor. I mean, no, I exactly. He didn't do what I was doing. So. I will second that. Any other nominations? Uh, well, I don't want it. So yeah, yeah. let's make it clear. <laughs> we can move past that. I don't think you want it. For Susan to be the new chair. All right. All right. Any opposed to staying? I I say I too. I got I got yeah. there were five of us and I got one vote. So no matter what happened, I lost. So <laughs> okay, that's good. You can take okay. Well, <laughs> now, now we need to not a nomination for the vice chair. You want that? No, nope. I'll nominate Chastity, I guess. Yeah, the second. Okay, any other nominations? Okay, all right. All in favor of Chastity as the vice chair signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. The board clerk, what does the clerk do, Ron, so people know? Board clerk is uh, responsible for the public interaction of the agenda. So if there's a request from the public or board members, the board clerk works with the chair to set the agenda. The, the select board chair usually has the final say on the normal agenda. Okay, so if there's a, a process of developing that between meetings, then the chair will say, Looks complete, everything's on there, post it, have you advertised, et cetera. The other board members, if there's a majority of three or more, can also add items on their on that kind of a forced, let's say the chair's refusing. Three or more members can have a have an add to the agenda. Hardly ever happens. Usually the chairs have added. So that's how the, the board clerk and the chair work together in between meetings to develop that. It builds, sometimes it builds from a month, month or two ago because you say, let's talk about it in two months and that goes on the draft agenda and it kind of builds. So the board clerk is really in charge of that kind of a process as well as taking the minutes and communicating with agencies or inviting people. But that's what you've been doing. Yeah, that's what I've and Dustin is doing it's been gradually getting to the finishing of the minutes part of it and I'm still doing the agenda part of it right now. Justin's also the board clerk for the planning commission and the DRB. And he's doing those agendas in minutes now. So he's transitioned to those kind of full time on those two. Plus attending the meetings and trying to coordinate this kind of thing that um, depending on what the board wants to see for all the boards, somebody has to sort of be in charge of remote tech technology. And that's also the job of the board clerk to make sure that happens. If anybody's in the waiting room to admit them into the room, those kind of mechanical things. Okay. So it's kind of a dual role. Um, and I tr we tried to do it. I tried to do that when you weren't here on um, Monday night. And it was really hard to do because you, we had a remote hearing, public hearing, taking public comment, the chat windows open. You know, there's people here talking, also trying to participate in the meeting. So it's really important to have the board clerk focused on the function of the meeting and not my advice we don't try to double time that with somebody that's staff trying to contribute to a discussion it's, it's almost um impossible to do it at the same time because yeah. somebody's going to lose either somebody's going to be left in the waiting room right <laughs> and I, and it's just the worst case because they're sitting there saying your host will let you in and it just keeps going and nobody's yeah. paying attention 
or there's uh, a missed question or something to staff and all of a sudden you're repeating yourselves and things like that. So it just runs a little bit better if there's staff and a point of work, which is sort of where we're headed, but we're not quite there yet. So then is this where we nominate Justin to be our board clerk? Uh, yeah, officially, <laughs> you, officially, this is, the re, I'm thinking. this is the reorganization time where you right. re, re nominate yeah. and he's here because you hired him for the board clerk for all three. You got it. Right. But you, every year you want to revisit that. Yeah. I can't the, again. the option is to go back to a board member taking minutes. That's, that's, a, that's the alternative. Bad idea. <laughs> we know that's a bad idea. That's the alter, That's really the alternative. So. That's you had to do it and it did not go well. <laughs> yeah, so, the 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 so nomination. And, okay, so we need a nomination for I nominate Justin. Justin as board clerk. A second. More nominations. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Our rules of procedure. Justin sent those out earlier. I had fun reading them on my iPhone. <laughs> so I didn't change a lot in there, mostly just added 10 and 11. Yeah. And added board clerk to one of the upper line for communications as far as town administrator and chair. Oh, okay. I think you know that 10 and 11 came up. I think in, in, if it wasn't at our last meeting, it was after the meeting we and we were talking about um, with 11 the um, what other boards we feel other boards and commissions should do and whether you move forward or you don't record oh, or that's or, right. you know or, or, uh, or what you do. Um, and I, I gather as the select board, we have the authority to tell them what they're going to do. Um, the DRB is required to adopt rules of procedure themselves, just like the planning okay. commission or select board. The directive that we're considering is to have a standard public outreach policy. And whether you enforce that or not could come down to a appointing or not appointing those people that won't follow that rule potentially we won't, don't really want to go there with volunteers but i think if you if the board sets a policy this is the minimum for boards beyond the statutory minimum which is minutes and agendas right. everything has to be live streamed as an option everything has to be on youtube as an option everything has to be recorded but not broadcast on youtube those are all the kind of the options. So, and I don't know how the other boards feel. They haven't really talked about it because they haven't organized yet. Oh. But just like it's a topic here, sort of a newer topic for the board to, right. to decide if you want to go there or not. I think if you do set that kind of currently, we run under the first option, right? That first select board, we run under we to record all select board meetings right. and post video audio. The full, the right. right. full, yeah, yeah, the full. Right. Yeah, right. we do the top of. So I, I vote out. I for I'll your own that the option ten, we stay that way. Right. Anybody disagree with that? Mm -mm. We've all gotten used to it. Okay. I, I think maybe what we should what we should yeah, use that, but... do that we would like I just said we would use them. I think it's the best for uh, yeah people. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Um uh, under 11, I'll speak on this only be based on I'm on a committee and I would uh, host a committee. Yeah. It's really hard for me to do the technical stuff in my house. We do a Zoom meeting, but I don't, I'm not technical savvy enough to have the meeting taker. And I'm lucky I do get the minutes. It's 100% volunteer. It's not like there's any money right. being taken from the town. Everything has to come forward to the board to get money, right? If someone needs to borrow money from the town, they come to our board to, to get money from us. So, I think fiscally, it's not taking from the town in our committees. You know, if the not we one, I know they don't have any. Right, and I was thinking the cemetery right. too. You know, the same cemetery. idea when you have meetings, right. right? You're not threatening. I think. I think obviously, what brought it up was the DRB. Right. But we now have. But the DRB. I was going to say notes. we have Justin doing that, and the DRB is part of our select board, right? We, we think our DRB is kind of a. They're not part of the board. They're I mean, a parallel board. 
Correct. That does its own thing once they're appointed. So to have them in the really the high profile boards. Right. They're not necessarily three a committee, they're a board. It's a three of us. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's actually a statutory board of the town Correct. where they are having the biggest effect on people mm -hmm. because of their land use permits. The planning commission likewise sets the regulations in place and everything they should do should be readily accessible. So you can see what's coming down the road and the select board obviously is resolved to be as transparent and, and open to that as possible, live streaming and YouTube archiving and everything else. So there's no issues with the board. When you pull back and say, we're going to record, but we're not going to make it available. That's where you get the rub of, okay, so you have it, but you're not making it easily accessible. Right. Yeah. Yes. Some towns have, have adopted a uh, in-room policy only yeah. with no recording. You just have the minutes and the agenda. And that that's an alternative, but it, you you disenfranchise is a little strong, but you don't make it available to people that can't get here. Right. And that's part of the part of the negative side of we have the capacity, but if you don't make it accessible and the and boards can meet at homes and things, then they really need a in-person option for those smaller committees and boards. But the three main boards, that's I think that was the original discussion. Right. Should those three main right. boards with the staff right. make that extra effort and be more accessible? As for option 11, I think I, I would like to request that we allow the committees to continue to take meeting minutes, notes, and report those to the town, just like we're doing now. Hence, you got a cemetery committee that I don't know that they're going to get on a Zoom meeting and then on to a GMTA just to talk about yeah, exactly. who's mowing or who's trying, you know, when they make their decisions, they still have to come forward to the board and then it's getting progressed. You know, sure. same, same yeah. if I make any decision with the, the rec committee, it comes to the board right. and it's under recordings. I don't think we need to triple record stuff. No, I agree. Yeah. And nor does our town need to staff staff, staff and fund yeah. such projects. It would take that question of how much staff you want to provide. Right. Yeah. And then I don't see an issue with doing it the way Matt's describing either. Yeah. Because they do it, people, the public does have access to rec any time. It's right. not like you're going to say you can't attend a meeting. But exactly. Right. And their minutes are available, which is a statutory right. minimum. So that's that's right. kind of the two prong thing. If they're open meetings and the minutes are available. And that's and our fine. committees aren't making decisions for our town and necessarily they're they're literally going to volunteer work 95 percent of it, you know. Well, yeah, and again, when you get two plans or what you're doing, then that comes up to the select right. 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 So you know what's going on. Yeah. And as long as as the minutes are there, if someone's interested in the rec committee, if someone's interested in the cemetery. You know, you can read them, and then if they have any questions, you know who it is. They're probably going to call somebody on the committee and ask a question. It sounds like option three for number eleven. Oh. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to vote on that. Wow! Well, yeah, we got that. Well, yeah. Should, yes, yeah. We have should, to we, them. should we add? Um, I'm asking Justin. Should I see you guys? Um, posting the agenda to front porch forum. I don't see why not. Because yeah. I feel like it get, that's better outreach. Uh, so but that's, I, I think that's where we're headed in this next one, talking about even Facebook. I think that right. we do need a Facebook page. Front porch forum is a huge one. I, I know everybody in that, our community talks with it. I, I, exactly. I read it. So. Yeah. Yeah, that would be everybody. Right. Well, is, I read the minimum, and that's what I read. So I don't read the paper. Like I said, I don't read the citizen yeah. because I don't get it, and I love the new wave, I guess. But oh, I that is my new citizen. I like it. Yeah, I know. but I'm th I was thinking because I was thinking about more places to post. So I don't know if we want to add that in to where things are posted. Um, we don't. I don't think the minutes need to go there, but I'm just thinking the agenda. Might be a good idea. I, don't I agree with that. That, that gives, that gives well, that gives people a, a chance to say, "Hey, this is coming, and right. come see us." And if that there's was something some of the you know those for, that's yes. been brought up with some of yeah. the issues. So I like, I like that idea. The agenda and then the minutes they can always go back if they choose not to come to the meeting. That's right. I'm yeah, still not like, oh, that was a topic I would read about. So yeah, right. So do agendas for everybody. Mm -hmm. For, for any, any any town postings. 
right? If, if, if an agenda is coming to the town to be posted, like our agendas are being posted here, yeah. right? Okay. We legally have to be posted. So anything with legal posting, okay. we just have it. Yeah. Is that a... Is it, it shouldn't be there. Right, so where yeah. do we want Well, to it's a responsibility. Out? No, it's a... We should ask of Krista, because we get we get 32 and 8. So why can't we ask Krista of the eight hours, right? She's got 32 town clerk and eight select board. We can add it. That's true. Yeah. Not anymore. I thought we lost that. Oh. It was a discussion. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But anyway, the, the quite the finer point is yes, I'm just in easy to do front porch forum. Okay. Having the committees draft an agenda. We just we got one Monday morning for Monday afternoon meeting. Yeah. And it may be impossible to get that kind of thing done. Right. You need to well, and again, at least two days. But again, for the committees, it's right. Yeah, and that's not making that big decisions. So we just four the meetings. Yeah, yeah, I would focus on the three. I think because yeah. yeah. the committees are all used to what yeah. they're doing now. Exactly. Yeah. We don't need to. And we haven't had any complaints and all right. that other stuff. Right. So the three are the ones that we're trying to. I'll be honest. It's hard to get to the minimum with getting your committee meetings. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And Jeff's been working on agendas, so that ought to be easy for him to when you have the agendas to post them on front porch. Yeah. So we're going to do the three. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And we have that as. So close. <laughs> okay. Then with that added, anything else? Okay, need a motion to accept them. So I'll make a motion to accept with the changes that we suggested. I'll second. Okay, any more discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, now I probably have to sign this one. That's another policy thing, yeah. I mean, what in the in the scope of official documents that go into the records, we, yeah, you, having signed and dated stuff when it was signed is good because it's a hand sweat signature. Um, I think but that, that's not the right, but one. that one has to be amended, right? Yeah, right. So <laughs> just to bring it back on the 28th, 28. mm -hmm. okay. and then the board can sign the back. Okay. okay, if it works good for a year, next year you just have a vote to readopt. Right. There may not be amendments, but okay. when it's the first one that's amended, you should sign it and, and have that as the 2023 version. Okay. okay. Appoint volunteers for the slate of offices. So the slate of offices. This is where we get yeah. Brian, right? Yeah. <laughs> he, came to, he came to be appointed to something. I don't know. But I suppose he went down. <laughs> he doesn't want to be. Highway was rolling. <laughs> so let me let me go over the slate of officers okay. first. Yeah. So the slate of officers are your official appointments that are usually good for a year. And I'll go through the list. It also includes designation of the official newspaper, which is required under Title 17 so that people know where to look for public hearing notices. It includes a confirmation of what your regular meeting schedule is gonna be for the year. Currently it's the second and fourth Tuesdays unless amended. And the official newspaper is the News and Citizen, which is the only option for regular newspaper. You did your chair, vice chair, clerk. Uh, we also need somebody authorized to sign interim warrants. This is the person that would work with uh, Jennifer on payroll warrants and things that happen outside of regular meetings. So that's the first action item that you need to add to your slate of officers. At the end, after we get through this short list of changes, then you have a motion to approve the slate of officers, which includes everything that I'm talking about. So it's really just a way to condense all these different decisions you're making. So who would be authorized? Generally, it's the chair of the board that's authorized by the select board to sign interim warrants and okay. payroll warrants. And then can you, the vice chair is the backup? Uh, we don't have that listed here, but can add it as a backup, sure. Yeah, I yep. definitely want a, want a backup here. What do you plan on dying on so this? I for three weeks. Oh, <laughs> true. That's true. That's good. Yes. Well, you, you, you spoke very calmly. I know. She scared me a little. Oh my God. Well, you know, I'm the old one up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so Susan and Chad say to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
We also had a on doesn't the, bother me. <laughs> uh, Dave Gagne has been filling the position of the first constable. Oh, are, yeah, he's going to keep filling. So he's not here to defend himself. Yeah. <laughs> Lamoyle Kennels is the official kennel. Okay. There's no lead animal control officer, but we do have an assistant that helps out, which is Keith. So that would be. Well, hi, Ann. job for you. <laughs> first, first constable is. David Ganya. David Ganya. G-A-G-N-I-E-R. What? A lot of extra money. Oh. <laughs> In a minute, I'm going to get a piece of paper just put no on it. <laughs> it's just saying, oh, buddy. Oh, can I? Yes. Okay. So the authorized sign warrants, first constable, official kennel. <clears throat> Sorry, emergency emergency management director Rowan Bobie is up now. If you want to keep going, does anybody else want it? No, you seem to know all about it. He yeah. did good. We had one sort of emergency, and he was on the phone for probably two hours straight. I'll do it. Yeah. Okay. If anybody else Thank wants you. to do it, I'm fine with that too. And Don Arch Archbold <laughs> was the. Uh, <laughs> Emergency management coordinator, also a one year term. She's interested in continuing. Oh, okay, okay, good. I'm the green update coordinator, and Don is a deep green update coordinator. I can do that again. Um, Memorial Fibernet. Memorial what? Fibernet. Oh, you have to appoint um, Michael Rooney, Carol Fano, and Jack Wool. So Michael Rooney's been the lead representative for the town. Mm -hmm. And Carol and Jack were the alternates or assistant. Keep seeing stuff from Michael, so I'm just being really into it. Yeah, which that. is good. Start. Start. Michael Rooney, Carol, someone. Carol Bono, F A N O. Jack Pull. W O R. Yep. Yeah. That's for one five and nine. And we have a vacancy on the GMA TV rep, which we've had forever. So unless somebody wants to jump in on that. Well, how about we start moving down the line? <laughs> we have people here. So we have one opening on the planning commission and one interested person. That's Eric Williams, who wants to another get another four-year term. I'm sorry, we had two open positions. Both members want to renew Chris Peel okay. and Eric Williams. Okay, great. On the DRB, we had one opening for uh, a four year term. That's Mac Teal. He's interested in continuing for another four years. 2027. That just sounds so, I know, I know. so far out. You know, Crazy. <laughs> Um, we also need a state a select board representative on the Joint Economic Development Board which deals with tax stabilization agreements. And we I don't think they've met lately. We had a, two or three agreements back in mid, probably five years ago that have all expired, started with a oil Chevy. So there's no active agreements now, but if there's- Great place for a new person. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need it, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. right, exactly. No objection. Is that what you said? Who did we have on sure. before? No. <laughs> um, that was no. chair of the board. I think. Oh, was it right? They yeah. was just a chair. Oh. But you didn't get to meet though. I don't. Right. Know. Well, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, true. Uh, Town Energy Committee had a couple openings, two vacancies, and Greg Paws. Well, it's the two-year term, so he's filling one vacancy. There's one vacancy that runs out next March 24. Rec Committee and Guy and Valley, Valley Hall Committee are all current members. Those are ongoing committees, and if anybody signs up, they're on forever. So there's no no terms for those. <laughs> so that's the list, and there's um, the only thing that you didn't do, which I 
We have a 2019 conflict of interest policy, which was a new statutory requirement in 2018, which you guys complied with in 2019, that it basically just says you will disclose conflicts of interest in any financial matters, basically. It's kind of a standard policy, but each board had to adopt their policy. So if you approve the slate of officers with these things in here, you'd be reapproving the 2019 policy. That's it. So even though that was long, it's quicker than voting on each one. Right. Town Energy Committee is Greg Paws for a two year term. There's one person. Yeah, there's one vacancy for them. Yeah. Not many vacancies. No, there's a vacancy for the zoning board. Right? DRB. DRB, yeah. there's one. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said. Um, no. Max term is up but there is another vacancy oh there's another yeah. vacancy oh i missed that. yeah it's a two-year okay. term that's open <laughs> or two years of a four-year that's open right now oh okay but yeah we're, overall we're doing pretty good but barely you know like yeah we're meeting the requirements yeah. yeah everybody has a quorum and there's a couple of vacancies but it's not like you have multiple vacancies where quorum is a problem right yeah so it's and Steve, good you want a seat on the drd board <laughs> okay, well, and, and we know and, and that Green Mountain TV as well, you know, that somebody that was involved in that would be certainly yeah. doesn't hurt. But uh, okay, so I know there are, you know, there are a few openings. Think about folks that might be interested. Um, hopefully, I have better luck than I did recruiting listers. <laughs> Still need a motion, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, one big motion yep. for all of that. Okay, well, I will make the motion to approve slate of officers. the slate of officers for 20, do I need the year? 23, 24? 20, 23. 23. Second. Can we get more questions? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody complaining? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll, we'll add the names and such and give you all a copy so you can see yeah. the list. Okay. Okay. Now, before we go any further, we're about to have a rare event. Brian, we thank you so much for having been on the board and being chair and all the things, all and all the things that you've done. And then we have a new member as well. And Susan became possessed and baked. Oh, <laughs> That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> but I don't want to make Brian have to stay through everything. So maybe we we'll start with a treat or, <laughs> or whatever. Man, I had to put the brownies in the freezer to cool so I could cut them out of the pan. And cutting it a little close. <laughs> okay. And appreciating the fact that everybody doesn't like chocolate and a little lemon pound cake. Yeah. Thank you. So, you know, you got to. We just, uh, you know, miss our baker. You know, if we could get loose. Oh, she baked. Oh, boy, was she a good baker. <laughs> she would come in with these stunning oh, chocolate eggs and um, food baked with goose eggs. So they're really good. So I don't know if people want anything like something now. We'll take a little break. Your napkins, Brian. You have to, you have to come have something first. Because <laughs> this is the, the thank you for you. If Thank you, Brian. Broken, you know, feel free to come visit yes, us at any time. That's right. That's right. And definitely. So I'll be Zoom because I'll probably be traveling. Traveling. traveling with you know it. Other working. Places. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sending, us, sending us pictures so, of uh, places. Would anybody like some now? And we can wait till you can take some as you better. The child in the car. That's exactly. <laughs> Say, oh, the joke. Take one out. That's like missed. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, we'll get as we thought we would deal. The conversation that we put off from last time is the cemetery and just a conversation about mowing and looking at doing one big contract for the town to get a whole bunch of little ones and, and as and as little businesses also are disappearing, you know, that we may end up needing to get to somebody bigger that's willing to that's willing to do it. And um, since the program that Brian ran for so many years was so good, is you know, no, anyway, <laughs> back in the old days, back in the old days, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so 
I don't know. Um, Matt started this. I Matt did start started. this. I yeah. Did start this. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. I, I run this rec committee. And so I have to go get a couple prices. And so then I mentioned to Ron, why don't we, especially we ran into cut problems with one of our private mowers who was started off free, 200, 300, 400 to the top of the year. We've got mowing. Why not try to get one big contract and make it cheaper for the town rather than to have, I think we have five contracts. So, and volunteers. And the same. Yeah. So some of it's uh, under contract. Some of it's, I think the fire station has a, a contractor that volunteers to support the fire department. So you have all sorts of different arrangements. You don't necessarily want to upset the zero cost donations. Right. But that could end too. I mean, True. you can't guarantee you that, that will happen. In the library? Yeah, so we added up, uh, I made a list of, a combination list of town properties and village properties, because oh, okay. the village may or may not have their capacity to do mowing. Oh, uh, up down to one step, one person on the village. Can you take the uh, mowing for the town off of our water bill? <laughs> we could do anything we want to the water bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good, I don't know if expect it, but still trying to save money. Get there, yeah. Yeah. So my thought was being spring, we could at least get a quote for a lump sum, and then even we could break it out as to you know, just see. So maybe somebody's not interested and just see what we get for interest. We had an early, we had an opportunity to stop. So you add all the cemeteries, is that what you're saying? Cemetery, the ball field. The ball field. The yard and the signage stuff that we're going right now. Yeah, just just so you know, the uh, mowing of the cemeteries is a huge difference than mowing a field oh, or yeah. a field, something like that. I so take that into account because uh, when they're mowing, you don't want to blow in the grass onto the stones. Right. Especially if they're cutting early in the morning, that'll cause moss and other stuff to start growing on them and stuff. And so uh, that and damage you want to be very careful when you're doing so you don't damage the stones and they're increasingly getting more and more costly the stones there and stuff so you might want to take that into account when you're when you're accepting bids and stuff well, well, that, i was gonna say there must be weed whacking who uh, currently does the cemetery weed whacking i would suggest you do it every other week for the cemetery some, some make it every week but every other week would probably make it uh more profitable in a sense for the others but yeah um, maybe, or you can do it seasonal. You can do it springtime, have them weed whack every week when the grass grows a little faster. Just and special place. cleanup on Memorial Day, I would assume. Absolutely. You right. want to specify those days yeah. in, uh, in your contract. Or whatever. I, I'm willing to accept opposition too. If, if you guys are saying this is a horrible idea, no, I'm great. I think it's great, Judy. What did you? We're here, we're here with questions yeah. and how this work, and just knowing what we. The guys that, because we've, as long as I've been on it, like 12 years, we've gone through two guys. And both times, okay, everything's going great. And then it's like, oh, wait, this cemetery isn't getting enough care with the trimming or, or, or they're letting the brush, they're not mowing back this way. So Judy or uh, Robert, somebody goes and says, we, we walk through the cemeteries a couple times a year. And so it's, uh, Judy's got all our questions, so I'm sure. Judy, you go. <laughs> they all written down. Yes, I did. Yeah. Well, I talked with everybody else, and we've all kind of come up with the same thing. But uh, you know, when Ron presented this to me, uh, I shared it with everybody, and uh, I, I think our, our first, yeah, I, I think we we would like to do this, um, but. But right, right. It's got to meet your specifications. Who is going to be in charge? If what, you what hire it? them, and and somebody, you know, you hire somebody to do all of the town, and they're going to do the cemeteries. Um, number one, are you going to be the one that pays them? Are you the one that's you know give them their check every month? Are you the one that's going to? If we have uh, complaints, and believe me, we get them when. Grandma, don't go up and you know, Grandpa's grave, or where did his come? Where did his flowers go? You know, I'm uh, so you know, we have to follow in on that. Um, and and we have to have a close connection with our uh, caretaker who's doing the maintenance. Sometimes 
It may be raining the first of the week, but we've got a burial on Saturday afternoon and the grass is as tall. We've got to ask you to please do some mowing on Friday. So it, it it's a lot of supervision. And I think we all feel that it would be a great, great idea. Get off our shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't taking it off your shoulders when I suggested that. You'd still be the boss of them, just like, I, like with our rec. I think you would still have to approve payment. You know, like, so that when the invoice comes, that Jen, Jennifer would still send the invoice back and say, what line item do you want this under? So, so it would still be withdrawn from the cemetery budget? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Still coming out of, like, so same mm -hmm. with the requisition, they would still have to bill that out. I, I would assume it's good. No, no. <laughs> I know, right? Um, yeah, there's a, it's just a lot of details. It's got to look good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of our things, my, my initial reaction was great. Okay, we've got a big contract. We're going to get somebody who's going to say, this is worth my time to do well because I'm making more money than if you've got little people. Because both times we've had to say, well, can you, this cemetery doesn't seem to be getting mowed enough. There's six of them. So, Every summer, it's usually falling to Judy and Russ to not Russ, Robert. Robert to say, I'll meet with him or Sarah, I'll talk with him. It was Isaac. It's mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, so at least every summer, there's either been a, a person who had a burial that had a concern or someone walked through the cemetery and had a concern. Or it was up at the center or it was down at the village or they're not trimming around the stones. And they would take the time, those three, to meet with the person and say, this is what we need. And I know for a fact that little historical cemetery beside my place, he wasn't doing the hand trimming at first. And then he had, I guess he hired a couple of girls or something and they came in and they were doing a much neater job. So I, I watch them when they're doing it, know what they're doing. Uh, but so that was, then our concern was, okay, great, we'll get this one big contract and someone will be really serious about it. And they were like, okay, but what if they're not really serious? Then who meets with that person and says, we need to improve this. Mm -hmm. right. We need to be able to yell at them. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. yeah. And yeah. when you have um, a burial, you want to be able to yell at them. Oh, no, it's always positive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never have it. Never have it. Time that we have to put into the cemeteries. It isn't just the mowing. I mean, um, you know, we're dealing with people that call and want to know where grandpa was buried 25, 30 years ago. Um, the selling of the lots and making sure the deeds are where they should be. And, um, you know, there's that part which. I myself, I'd like to see the mowing go under some other supervision because it it it's getting to be a big job. We used to have four cemeteries we took care of. Now we got six, yeah. and and they're all they're all big cemeteries. We have other good questions. Yeah, we, we came up with a brainstorm of questions. Yeah, that was good. Well, we wanted to know how it was going to affect our budget, of course, because um, you know even though. We use the money for to hire somebody to maintain the cemeteries. We still are in charge of the cleaning, any broken stones, and a lot of the cemeteries are old stones that we have to have clay come or Vermont monuments come and straighten them up. There's a lot of expenses in there. Um, what about your sunken graves? Yeah, there's mm -hmm. another thing. Is that right? a separate thing? From your brain? No. So, uh, oh, you yeah, don't, definitely. Yeah, we Robert has been really good about getting topsoil. Good, uh, you know, there, yeah. Um, but uh, I remember a time about 10 or 15 years ago, we had a guy that did it, he went and got the topsoil himself and did it, yep. but we don't see that anymore. Um, so, that, so that was one thing. And you were talking about a line item, and I know that this is something that is being considered. if. Does that mean all of the the, tre the Robert's treasure and he handles the checkbook and payments and the bills and has for years? Would he have to give that up, or would you just have a line item for just mowing and let us still 
maintain the money from uh, the sale of lots and the cleaning and the re uh, fixing up the stones. Removal of trees. Removal of trees has been a big thing. Uh, when our forefathers planted those beautiful maples, they loved them. They yeah. realized it would look like this the last time we had a tree removed. This is just to cut it down. Uh, it was, I think, six fifty, six hundred and fifty dollars. They didn't take away the wood. I mean, we gave it away to, to a new family, which you know, oh. I'm glad we did that. But um, you know, and, and there's limbs that fall all the time in that cemetery. It's a lot of work, and uh, um, can answer, so can answer your question. There's a division. Here. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. so in the 2020 audit that you just received met, met with the town auditor last meeting and she's she didn't say you couldn't have your own checkbook but she did say because you're funded by the town taxpayers that there should be some transparency to the exchanges of money mm -hmm. and what she meant by that is you can continue to do what you're doing but jennifer who's our finance manager needs to see the money and where it goes and whether it's in your small checkbook whether everything goes through the town accounting system and then you get reports on that money. It should be one way or the other. So for example, you asked about the mowing bill. Mm -hmm. It's very, uh, just like Matt was saying, the rec committee or somebody should be approving the work because their their vendors are asking for money for good work. Mm -hmm. And if you deny it, if you say, no, uh, that week was terrible. They didn't even show up, but they're submitting. So we need to know that from the commissioners. But if it's all good, you would code it and send it to Jennifer. She would pay it through the accounting system, and we'd be tracking that stuff. Or there would be no basis. checkbook activity there in that scenario. On a weekly basis, this would happen? When, whenever. Yeah, she uh, pays it. Whenever the bill is like, it's monthly. Weekly. Yeah, we work with the vendors to make sure it's timely okay. paid. So it's just, I was going to say, she pays bills every two weeks, so. Yeah, so that okay. the timing of it is an issue. It's the processing of it. So if you, if the invoice is left on the fence and somebody has to go grab it on a Friday because they're not mailing it, somebody has to physically do that and get it into here to do it that way. If you're not going to do it that way, you're going to run through the checkbook. Then there's a reporting that I forgot the technical term that the accountant said, but we have to know what the checkbook activity is. So you would, I think, uh, in one simple. Uh, concept. You would photocopy your check register and give it to Jennifer so she can see the activity and have that accounting that way. But one way or the other, somebody has to be, the recommendation is that any money that comes from the taxpayers and is spent for town purposes, which is under your big umbrella of cemetery commission, needs to be tracked somehow and reported to the town, which is Jennifer. <laughs> Questions? So those, that's the two options I that I understand. <laughs> And either way works. In other words, we're yeah. trying to get the the library does this hybrid thing now. Yeah. And I think Matt's seeing some positive movement on the town reports because as Jennifer gets to know the accounting system better, she can easily produce a report on all your expenses, just like the check register. It mm -hmm. looks very similar, but it's in the town accounting system. The other way is to keep your records yourselves and then have the check register or the accounting form or QuickBooks or whatever you're using sent to Jennifer. There's no quick no, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you're using, it's the checkbook system. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> some kind of report, whatever it format is. So you can talk to Jennifer about the pros and cons of that. All right, we can talk. Well, do you have any other questions? I think the only one I had jotted down, we were talking one night, we said that if this didn't work and we weren't comfortable with it, could we withdraw? Absolutely. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think that goes along with your um, other question earlier about who's who the contractor would report to. We hope it's the commission, the commission members, and the same thing for saying it's not working. You need to go to the board and say, this ain't working. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can fix it, but if we can't fix it, we should be able to get back to on the rec side of things, like you were getting hung up on, well, how many people how how do we get this out there? Because for so many years it was basically just right on the handshake. Like oh, you're doing this year, okay, sounds good. Well, it's not really fair to the town people or any businesses to not advertise that or let it out some way. So I only did like when this came up, I was I'm head of a rep committee, and here I am chasing people and same deal. Like you said, okay, someone sometimes like we host the state tournaments up there, and all of a sudden we get there and like, they're not cleaned up and they're not done. So then 
somebody from the rec committee is bringing their own mower from home and mowing the whole ball fields yeah. at a zero cost. So it's, it's kind of the same thing, you know. And I just went around, hey, if we've got eighty-five thousand dollars worth of mowing going on in this town, why don't we try to get bring it so up? Just put it yeah. up to bid, and yeah. yeah. And, and you you have the figure for. We've we've had X. This is our budget. X amount of money for mowing each year, right? Each year we say we've offered ISIC the contract at this amount of money, and the most we've done is a two-year contract. And so when we were heading into a three-year contract, we were wondering how it affected our budget in terms of we don't have our budget doesn't increase very much ever. Twenty-two thousand. No, if you if yes. you uh, sell a lot of lots during COVID, we sold a lot of lots. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, people start thinking ahead. Well, that's right. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that suddenly gets real. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, you know, that's, so that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of our income. <laughs> yeah. I think it'll be a lot cheaper to do it this way than you guys talking about. That. Well, I, I think I also don't want you guys coming up the screen at me and saying, "Hey, you hire these people." It's not that idea. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know I did that. <laughs> well, I would think what would happen is if you want to do it, is they should work with you because you got you really know here's the mowing. Just maybe there's just we let it out as a town offering, say, hey, and then look at low bids and say, hmm, this isn't gonna work. You know, True. Just yeah. put it out there just so that you're getting basically five bids or six bids or maybe seven bids, who knows, you know, opportunity. So, yeah, I think you might want the whole town. I mean, he may want to bid on the whole town, Isaac. He may want to bid on. All I that. I don't know. I um, he finished last year, and um, I usually talk to him to see if he's interested. Yeah, and I haven't. I, he didn't reply. Is that so, big, big, big Isaac or little Isaac? Because they both have something. I think they both do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like and and I got we got reached out to me by like. I know Tucker Judkins is interested. Oh, uh, there's a lot of them. Lot of them I, I know the last time that we advertised it, we only did it one week in, in the paper. We should have done it too, mm -hmm. because afterwards Robert had some some uh, landscapers come up to him oh, and say, Oh, okay. we didn't see it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. That's yeah, good. So. so maybe as a big bid, we might get more. Yeah, right? maybe he's under town. I don't know. We could put it on the right to Exactly. You know, places like that. Yeah. Well, wow. just to yeah. give you a, a my next question oh, sorry, would be is how soon do would this be happening? Because you know Sometimes now. we're having yeah. yeah, time's moving on. Memorial Day is a big one. And yeah. we have a start about at least the second week in May, but just the cleanup. There's a lot of cleanup here yeah. before you start mowing in the cemeteries. So maybe um, we Christmas wreaths. Uh, oh, right. yeah. Everybody left there, right? right. Yes. Limbs, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do, you, do you have like a, I don't know what I want to call it. List. A list of what you, a list of what you give people to when they quote it. You it's know, in, in the contract. It. Okay. It's in the contract. So that's what we can. And the contract is, you have. Oh, perfect. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. What I was going to say is just for the discussion, we have four municipal entities and one religious entity involved in mowing. Fire District 1 up in North Hyde Park has 1.6 acres. They're a municipal government up in running the water system up there. The village has about 12 properties, Village of High Park, and they maintain about 9.1 acres every year. And the town has about 14 properties, including the cemeteries at 25.4 acres. And then we have one church, the St. Teresa's, that's supported by taxpayers at about one acre. So that's currently, being, that's a lot of acres being maintained. So I think you're, I think you're right that having a good interview and a good list of expectations as part of that bid mm -hmm. and interviewing people if it's competitive because it's really going to come down to relationship with you on cemeteries right and maybe we keep it separate cemetery separate you know because there is a totally different yeah appeal yeah. or 
Yeah, they, 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 I didn't know until I learned today. Uh, somebody may want the bare bones ball fields kind of track. But exactly. Then again, you put everything together. Right. Yeah. You're going to yeah. get a better price. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. All we can do is try it and see what it is. Right. See, well, that's well, yeah. I already put it in the paper. Yeah. I noticed. Oh, uh, okay. So we should. Yeah. We can get it. Get it out soon. I think you, you may want to put in the contract. And not most, no people don't know it. But um, require the person to have a rear discharge on their mower. That way you don't get, uh, if, if your grass gets ahead of you, you don't get lumps going along. Them. Uh, but on, in, in your case, on the cemetery, rear discharge automatically goes backwards or doesn't go down the side on the mm -hmm. snow. In your case, it doesn't leave those lumps out in the field. If you're in there, they have to go back and rake them again because when the ball is rolling, you don't want those. Um, be you know slow it down ball or whatever that type of thing <clears throat> it makes it a lot easier for a rear discharge and you can put it in your contract and that that's what you require the person to have is as a rear, and it can be used in all aspects of your is that what uh, one of those pillows is i don't know i think well, those manufacturers make the rear discharge just yeah. has to be ordered because i was going to say we've never had that problem no they've all i mean we've really We've been fortunate. We've received a lot of compliments. I mean, we've had people go and visit the cemeteries and say, hey, we were up there. You know, they look so nice. And 649. Yeah. Yeah, I got to go. That's I, right. I apologize. I don't want to be rude, but I got to leave. Take Charles some food. Well, yes, they take him a snack. Yeah. No, deduct it from your check. <laughs> I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you the 13 cents there. <laughs> Thank you. you take your app. <laughs> Thank you guys. Sorry. Thank you, man. Yep. Thank you, man. Bye, Matt. So now I'm off the board. Thank you, Lisa. Brian, thank you. I think so. Do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's just going to be a matter of talking about it. It's going to be a great idea. Yeah, just kind of idea. And, and we'll see what happens. And it may be one of those great ideas that you go, well, that was a great idea that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> How much does the, pay, uh, the cemetery commission spend now in the way? Um, was it 9000 last year? Wow, nine was what I was thinking, and then I was like, Was it nine first year and 11? Or eight. It was eight, and we gave them last year, and then we said, Because of gas, yeah, 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 a lot of people, six, six, six cemeteries, mm -hmm. and, those were... and that includes cleanup in the spring, yes. or is that separate that's included in there? Right. Yeah, do they, do they dig the graves too? No, no, that's what the contract would So, like in the they come and they blow the leaves outside oh, nice. so that the leaves are gone in the spring. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. And try as you will, we, well, I don't know, but I know Judy, not walking in the cemetery and there's so much wind and all those old trees and all the, you, you're constantly throwing branches, but you can't mow a cemetery without walking it. Yeah, get all that stuff out of the way. Yeah. Right. right. You thought it was all your trees you did. You talked to the town tree warden. You should get him to come over and check on the cemetery. And well, he's a good idea of, of management and tree management and ideas, and he's got good lists of folks to take down trees and do well, that sort of stuff. Yeah, see, I mean, yeah, because that's what it is. It's all we have, you know, we have been uh, talking with other people, other commissioners, and a lot of cemeteries now. There's no more hedges. There's no more bushes. Yeah. No more trees. And we have put in our rules and regulations: no more trees are to be planted. Yeah. And we're pulling them up as fast as they're planting them, and which isn't making good relations. But now, what we've got to do is Sarah's going to claim she's going to do a lot of it. But um, we really have got to go in there. They they plant perennials. And they look nice for five years. When you know what a perennial does, sure. and now what's happening? It's covering a lot of the stones, so you don't even know the name of people. So we have spent three years at least, don't we, mm -hmm. just going around and and flipping them as close as we can. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been telling the people that well, things like where my flowers go. Well, we can't see the stone. Um, you know, there's uh, so we there's a lot of places they don't even allow um, artificial flowers anymore. So we have yes. There's also some cemeteries that are uh, the the new parts of the cemetery. They're making it mandatory that the stone is flush 
Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Make yeah. It less yeah. maintenance, it's yeah. cost effective for, yeah. for the town and stuff like that. When you're mowing, you do less maintenance and stuff like that, having the stones. Plus, your military cemeteries are also yeah. well, right. flush right. instead of the cross and right. stuff like that. And you don't have to get the weed whacking or anything else. Yeah, you just mow it. Well, they have, they have instructions now that you need to be able to read the back of the stone and the front of the stone because they'll have children's names or things on the back of the stone and this great big rose bush uh, or something has uh, grown yes. up and you just got to cut it down. I mean, it's a beautiful stone. They paid so much money for it. Yeah, yeah. That please don't plant things that cover the stone. Yeah. Anyway. It's hard to think ahead, you know, because it's this pretty little. So, you know, we've really actually asked a lot of whoever we hire. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You. as you know. They have helped us with some of this. Yeah. But it would be nice just if they could just concentrate on the cleanup and the mowing, and then we would still have funds enough from the sale of stone uh, lots, rather grave lots, to maybe have a landscaper come in with the problem yeah, right. things and, and clean up things and yeah. speak this stuff up and get it out and put grass seed in it. Um, it would it would certainly improve the yeah. area. Um, so that's something we're kind of thinking about too. Yeah. But um so you guys will just go ahead and give it a shot, see what you get for bids. Yep, I'll work with uh, Brian and Matt. And you guys just email just to like look at the draft, sure. just if you want to do that right sure. to the mower sure. that and then we'll get it out in the newspaper. So we lost some signs. You know, sure, I did. He did say <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's a short term committee, right? Thank you for your optimism. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, you. We all work a lot. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see the ladies on the board. I know. I'm speaking that. We're kind of outnumbering. We're only down. We're only down. We're only down. We're only down. No, please. Not this day. I'm going to go. Thank you. 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 Yeah, right. Uh, we, you know, we're pretty big and too early if you want. Right. Oh. <laughs> so, so, I made maple cookies I made maple cookies to the I made maple cookies to <laughs> yeah. 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 Fire I saw a little talent. Thank you. Fire well, hey, I'm just a three year old all day long. Well, wow. okay. Oh, then you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yes. 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 Give Judy up. One so, six. public comment? A bill yeah. Uh, name, six. please. Steve. Okay. What I'm here is for is I think it's time select board uh, revisit the speed limits in this town. Okay. I've been done for a while. I, I think uh, some of the postings don't make sense at all. Uh, and there's confusion as to what is the speed limit on most of these roads. Okay. Um, there's dirt roads in Hyde Park that are what, 50 miles an hour? Yep, they're not posted, they're 50 miles an hour. That's way too damn fast for dirt roads, especially down Centerville. Centerville Road, that's not paved. I didn't know that it's a deal that's not posted on a dirt road. All right. <laughs> but yet I can see that Noise Farm Road, where some of our select board in the bottom, is 25 miles. Now that's a much less. Yeah. That's the village. That's, that's the village. The, it changes right at the end of the village, which is the driveway into my property. It's 25 to there, and then it increases. And when, and when, and when, and when, 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 I think it's 35. That goes to noise. That goes to 35, I think. 
I thought it was equal to 40. It's 20. Because coming the other way is 35. Which oh. you're right. That's an ego. What? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and for me, whether it's in the village jurisdiction or not, um, coming from Route 15, starting up Center Road, Centerville Road by the high, uh, fire station. Fire department. Yeah. 25 miles an hour there, that can't even, you know. Hard. It, it, it can't be enforced. No. So why post it? You know, I, I have, not to interrupt you, but I have seen the police department at the fire station quite a bit over the last six months. Because remember, we were asked complaining them. about that. Yeah. Asked them to. Yeah. We yeah. asked them to. My dad got pulled over. And, uh, <laughs> I have seen them there. <laughs> right there. But oh, it I might be. I think we're doing well. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't want to get confrontational, but he even says, that the speed limits in this town are basically unenforced. You don't, have enough, you don't have enough control to enforce the speed limit that you get posted. The speed limits you get posted are not realistic. And um, Longmore, is it Longmore Hill Road mm -hmm. that crosses? Mm -hmm. The Dr. Silverstein's up yeah. there. Yeah. I don't think that's posted. I think that's 50 miles an hour. How would you like to live on that road at 50 miles an hour? Ron, didn't we do it's the, some. the last time we had this conversation, though, but you, we had a good map that we put we upstairs and down here. Well, that, that had all the roads and the speed limits on it. It was just helpful for everybody to look at and go, yeah, right. Okay. Well, it would be helpful on the highway to have something like that. You've got a 45 mile an hour speed limit uh, sign um, just past the noise panel going towards the north end. That part, oh, right. Yeah. You don't have no speed limit sign on that road until you come to the corner by where Oval Lagani is to it. And that's a 30 mile warning sign because of the curve. Oh, yep. Okay, but that's it for the curve. Then after that, you've gone by a couple of uh, town roads, mm -hmm. speed limit back to 50, because it's not posted. Okay. I, uh, right, no, no, I think we can look at it. You don't think travel those roads on a regular basis, you don't notice. I live up there, I've lived up there since 78. And it's getting to the point now, you're taking your life in your hand up in the village. And if that's the way it's going to be, you know, either I'm living in the wrong town or we get the wrong uh, postings out there. We, and I've we, talked to the sheriff department yeah. multiple times and they agree. Can I have some education on who? The town set has set all these speed limits. Is that yeah, it's is, always more complicated? <laughs> yeah, okay. No, but it's, it's not that easy. Okay. Okay. So, I didn't know, like, no. So, so, let me let me tell you a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Got a phone call about Garfield Saturday. About the speed? No, about oh. sand. Oh, oh, oh. There wasn't okay. enough sand on the road. Okay. So I went up there. To see, I got a video right in my pocket that I can show you people. And I showed you the speed limit signs and everything up through there. And I followed one car out of there Saturday. Down around the corner by Kevin Jenkins, okay. it's 35 miles an hour. It's posted? It's posted. Okay. okay. That car was doing 35 to 40 miles an hour down around that corner. Okay. Shows the sand and everything. And when I hit Garfield Road, down by Davis Hill. And I can show you the speed limit on the phone. I can show you the speed that that car was going. It was going down that hill 60 miles an hour with a selection in it. So it don't matter if we put a 1,000, 1,500 or 2,000 signs out there. 
it's not going to do no good unless we get these people to understand what the signs say. The enforcement issue. The enforcement the issue, issue, but we can't enforce it unless we get the, the fleet we post. And, and, and I know what Roger's saying. I know what Roger's saying. And I'm telling you, I've seen it myself that his department is out here on the state road doing radar on the state road down to the church and down to the vault here in Hyde Park. And that's the state road. And why are we paying him to, to run radar on a state road? I have no idea. And that's what I'm trying to say. And I will say this right on the mic that I've seen it and I know other people have seen it. I've seen that and I question it. Okay. All right. And I'm I, concerned with the state highway. Well, I'm me concerned neither. with Center Road, I'm concerned with Centerville Road, Long uh, Hill Road. You got Garfield. Garfield. Well, Garfield's 35, I think you said. 35, yeah. 50 miles an hour down. Okay. See, but I think um, we we can look at it again. Yeah. It is not as simple as we say, okay, we're going to change it and then putting up signs. Because you have to it's not, state. I can't, that's right. Oh, okay. Right. I figured there was a process. I, that's right. what I was asking. Right. No, it's a, so, so any history. study has to be done by it. Right. The state, well, the state legislature actually has a bill in this session, which we're going to find out if it makes it to crossover next week. I think it's next week. I hope it does. That changes the default 50 on those gravels to 35 um, in the state of Vermont. Okay. I hope that, 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 could go, that would help part of that. Tremendously. Right. The back roads problem. For speak. sure. Uh, it's going to go through. Yeah. yeah. Is that in Donna Hyde County? For secondary paved roads, maximum speed sure. limit yeah. is 45 miles an hour. Jessica, oh. look at that. I think you travel 45 miles an hour on many of these town roads. We want that to know. I think you find a lot of people don't disagree, but they don't travel that speed, but that's <laughs> right. That as far as posting, right. That's what they should be posting. Your roads in this town. Be maximum of 35 miles an hour. But I don't know of any that are safe at 40, 45, 50 miles an hour. It's going to save taxpayers money on road maintenance. I've been in construction for 65 years. I know construction. The faster you go, the more repairs you have. Right, Ron? Yeah. Well, sure. On the road end. Yeah. Just driving over the road, you lose dust every time you drive over the road. Not to mention accelerating. Three quarters of an inch of gravel you, you, you lose every year on a gravel road. Just, yeah. just to the dust. So what's what's the process? Just a second, everybody. What's the process for changing the speed limit? Let's, let's hope that, the, that, that it goes through when they're 35. Well, then we can buy some signs and well, post it. But. Yeah, we did this in 2018. Okay. We came up with a whole bunch of changes because some yeah. roads weren't posted. The board said don't post dead end roads like Cool Drive or, you know, with one or two. Those are town highways, but don't bother spending the money on the signs. We'll let those ride. Right. So we went through that list and Mark went through and he posted what he could. So some of the roads weren't posted at all that should have been, you know, like Trombley Hill or something. We found some big roads that were 45 that just were not posted at all. Uh -huh. The default is still 50 for those roads. But we left a lot off. And I think what Steve's saying, there's some gaps around. Uh, right. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, as they say, uh, so we'd revisit the map basically and, yeah, exactly. and look yeah. at it. Yeah. About the all you can say that buying for the town to buy speed signs 25 miles an hour. In the town is a waste of money. Okay. Uh, how many people in this room travel 25 miles an hour day in and day out on that first stretch of Center Road? Oh. Yeah, I followed you. And I was going to see a great thing. You're not going to do 30. 
fun like everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> we got photos. <laughs> okay, photos of video. Uh, yeah. I see a lot of because I do travel a little fast on that road. <laughs> I always allow people walking, so that you yeah, it's me. Yeah. Uh, on that people particular road, it feels like it is. Yeah, uh, I agree. I almost got hit last week in front of my driveway with a panel a van coming down the hill. If they weren't going 55, 60, they weren't going at all. Yeah. And there was a uh, a panel uh, truck delivery truck mm -hmm. with his flashes on parked just above my driveway for a loaded item. And they still come down through there. I walked around the truck carrying a toilet. But I thought for God we're gonna get it. Okay. I'm not gonna put up with that stuff anymore. Well and you get lots of people coming up from Morse you know, to Green River Reservoir. You know, and all up to Trombley Hill, that gets heavily traveled with people, so that if it's not clearly posted, they don't they have not been there. Yeah, people are fine. Let's be forty. Right. Do whatever it takes. Slow these people down. Just because it is the way it is doesn't make it right. Does it? So, so again, what do we have to? What's the process? So, in two thousand eighteen, the town select board inform the village of High Park trustees that their traffic ordinance, which set that 25 miles per hour for all the village streets, all in one big blanket, was something they couldn't do because the select board controls the town highways. Um, but for years, the village trustees would be adopting ordinances and trying to control the town highway on top of the select board. And finally, we figured it out. 2018, which is really late, but we said no. So in 2018, the town took, I don't know if it was mediated and negotiated, basically cut and paste the village ordinance into the town highway ordinance. So that's why the 25s are there. They're okay. just a, they were just a, we're not changing anything, but we need to have control of that through the oh, Because ordinance. that's considered the village by the fire station. Yeah, all that's the village, that's right. up to the noise farm up to intersection, the basically. Okay. So that's where the 25 sign is. Gotcha. There's a little stretch of village um, noise farm. Oh, right. And the town okay. should have posted 35 on the other side of the village line. Gotcha. That's why this 25 is there. So the easiest way to do it, because you know, especially <laughs> Steve mentioned all these different uh, roads, is to use the 2018 ordinance and just have a map done to show where the existing ordinance applies where it doesn't apply mark french will have to confirm where the proper signage is if we're missing a gap you're supposed to post signage every there's a court case it was either a half mile or a mile you can't go farther or else it's ineffective under the ordinance so there in a short road that's a half mile you can get away with the beginning of both sections but i think once you get to a mile you become not effective okay and also i think when you uh the road intersects with another town road. It's supposed to change. You have repost to have that. Repost that. Yeah, that's right. That, that's, that's that's not proper in town. Yeah. So even if the sheriff wanted to enforce it, you have, really have to have know your even, signage is up. Even when you go from twenty five to thirty five, you got to have a reduced speed limit sign there. Oh, I do. You have to. Have a, it should have a warning sign when you change. You got to have a reduced speed limit sign, or you will throw it out of court. I know. Um, yeah. But, I, okay. I really think we need to re revisit. But state law may fix your gravel road thing, Hopefully. because that would apply to every town. That makes sense. Well, yeah, they've been fighting that for years, and they're throwing it out to be done to change it entirely. Yeah, But then again, yeah. So then do it. That's well, first. Sure. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. That's that's four kids. People are going to do that. It. Is I've dealt with the stuff. Be dealt with it. That's not the way to handle it. You know, you can buy a thousand zones for this. You can buy a still going to be in control by patrolling. Right now, they can't yeah, they, because there's there's nothing there. Now, let's just see about dealing with the speed limits, and then we'll deal with enforcement. You know, right. um, it, it sounds to me like select board here doesn't want to. Doesn't want to revisit that. 
I'm not hearing that at all. No, I'm, not hearing. I'm not hearing that at all. Well, uh, maybe you, one you, person. You hear what you want to like, I can tell you. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. dealt with it for years. And unless you can enforce it, and if you put all the signs out there, then you got to get the people off the gas. Well, we got we to gotta get the... We need to get out the map first and see where the gaps are. Right. Then figure and let's hope it would be wonderful if that passes and the driving roads go to 35. But if they don't, it doesn't mean that we can't do that. Right. And right. then come up with the, what we want to do with the with the and figure out what the uh, uh you know what signs are starting to cost, but figure out what the distances are and work with Mark and get it posted because until it's properly posted, I don't care what speed you put up. You know, it they it you're right. It can it it gets thrown out unless it's properly posted. So yeah, that's why. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're agreeing with you. Well, are you being well, able to take yes for an answer? <laughs> well, that's all it takes. <laughs> you know, um, it, it's and I know I'm not the only one. That's oh no, so you're you know you're people all the time. You know, it, it's a concern. And I guarantee you, Hyde Park is not the only town that is hearing this. Oh, no. You know, it's, sure it, that, yeah. Sure yeah. yeah. It's the only town I'm concerned with. I've lived in right. I've lived in for 50 years. Once the legislature make up their minds, that's what they want to do, then that's when things will start happening. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But we'll get. Let's see again. We'll get that map up again because that's a yeah, that's sort good. of what we did last time. Yeah. We picked and choose, and then yeah, whatever you decide to put in the ordinance, you would sign for that. You could look at the current ordinance and take some stuff out to reduce your signage cost or leave it as is and add more. So it's I think it's probably fine from the 2018. What's in the ordinance should be signed. Got it. So we're, we're not going to look at it from that angle. The village sign, the speed limits, there's some certain village 25s that should be looked at again, even though they're in the ordinance. So you can pull out Centerville. Depot Street is hard. People uh, really want That's 25 that. all the way down through to, yeah. to um, the cemetery over there. They decide to bridge power plant. Yeah, for a long way. Yeah. 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 That's always Because there used to be a speed drop there. Yeah. Where, where is that now? Morris. Down Depot Street and the 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 oh, yes. okay. yeah. over through to Kitty's Falls Road. Yeah, Depot that's all, be all 25. But it used to be 25, yeah. 25 yeah. went to 35, mm -hmm. then back to 25. You know, because I put the sun top. I don't know. <laughs> 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 you did a nice job. You know, tell you what. Okay. Uh, On to I next. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank Absolutely. you for Thank you. We're, we're not in disagreement with you. No, right now. I, I'm not disagreeing. I agree 100%. Neither 100% what you're saying. That. It is. You took a good sign. That's been five years. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's good time to look at it. Yeah. It is easy to control the coming out. I bet. Whoever is not money to supposedly control some of the speeds in this town. Well, I know the other towns I cover as well. A lot of them understand. Yep. <laughs> we, uh, We've been there. Uh, can't uh, get the posting right. It doesn't matter who it is. Uh, nobody can know it. Right. Okay. Next. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Thanks Please for coming in. in and being patient through the cemetery conversation. All right. That beats my water won't be there one day. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets out of line. So. Good ones, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Today, I thought about it might not be true. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Quick review and do it. We need to think of town meeting day. A review. Well, that was fast, wasn't it? I was gonna say. <laughs> it's very yeah. fast. No, it was really quickly. Uh, I don't know. And the changes. changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The fact that meeting has to come up. Yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but I, 
I, I think what has happened there is folks realize that the select board really isn't involved when we don't have any control, we don't mm -hmm. have any stand, we don't, it's just, you know, yeah. this is this is the process. And if somebody's going to appeal it, they'll appeal it, and it'll go through the court process and they'll do what it's going to do. Exactly. And they get that. I mean, it gets it could get shipped back to the DRB to then open it up and yes, do it again. Exactly. So, and we still don't have anything to do with it. I was pretty shocked we only had 216 voters, and that included absentee. Yeah. What's that? 216 voters. That was it. 216. That's it. 38 of those were absentee. Right. Isn't that crazy? There were like, what, 65 people at the meeting, maybe? No, 78, Chris just said. Yep. That, that was, yeah. Well, that's counting all of us, two and the people, but there was 65 out of the audience. Oh, did you count them? I did. Oh, you're just careful. Yeah. 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 yeah, Chris is at seven. Well, that's probably signed good. in. We got some checks. We filled us. You're right. right. I would. I can only see us. One side of the list. That makes sense. So, yeah, so she said oh. 70, but yeah, just 216. Yeah. How would you increase it? You you used to. Perennial. You used to. When I was with the elementary school, it used to be yes. packed. Yeah. We talked about that. And exactly. then we went to the oil and the, the well, we talked the, about the that auditorium did, was did probably want, 150 people. Yeah. Well, we talked about it a couple years ago. Did they want to go back to the elementary school and they didn't want to do it? Yeah, we did though. Yeah, yeah. I, I got I'm sure they wanted to go back to the elementary school. Well, I think a lot but of it's just fast paced. Well, I think we didn't really have, I mean, yeah, the budget obviously is a big deal, but we didn't have a lot on the ballot, really. I mean, a fire truck, but a lot of people feel that that's an emergency vehicle and you don't usually see a problem with that, right, with voting, but, and then it was just, all that else was on the ballot was just the, you know, the select board and then listers. Just, well, just another year. Yeah, I don't know. Next year, put a table in your, uh, Town report is going to go up 35 percent. Yeah, there you go. And then when it gets in the hole, it goes, we just go to the paper and, and, and you'll have everybody there. But and then a lot of people what? have said that you know times are different and a lot more people work, so they can't come during the day. I've heard people complain they can't. So day. like, do we move it to the night time, like or like a three o'clock in the afternoon? Someone suggested. Oh, you know, but. Yeah, I mean, I think no matter what, it's gonna. It's just, it's it's just see where it ounces. I think so too. You look at the ages of the people who are this. Absolutely. When when they had it down the elementary school, there was kids yeah. there. Yeah, I know. They yeah. were talking about how you didn't have baked goods and yeah, yeah. 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 and chili and I don't know. You just had a yeah. people brought stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's a fast paced world, and yeah. everybody's gonna make money. Yeah, I love that. Because yep, the, right. the age that we're down there. Yep, we're all retired. All retired. <laughs> Except for you. That's exactly. Yeah. You were the largest percentage of people. But yeah, I bet. Guarantee. And even a lot of the voters that came, you know, when I worked the polls, well, that's not true. That's not true. When I, there was a lot of people because they came up. I worked the four to seven shift. So but the average is the work shift. The average is 50 and up. Absolutely. I don't know if I see any yesterday, if I see any 20s and 30s hardly. No, um, well, no, 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 no. Uh, John Brogan was the there. Kid. Oh, yep. He's in the nine. So. Yeah, there was a handful. Yeah. Let's say yeah, five. It's not yeah. that if that, if that, if that. I, I don't, yeah. No. I don't it's know. almost time to just say, Forget well, town meeting, put their well, own. Oh boy, Jack Anderson will really be after us. What's that? <laughs> Jack Jack is. Really yeah. Let's get to the thing that everybody wants to do it by ballot. Yeah. Well, on the news, they said they did a percent. I can't remember the number of towns in Vermont that had gotten rid of town meeting and everything's Australia. And then the hybrid ones, like we are. Daniel's had done. Yeah. Yeah. Danville voted to not not that. not do that. Not to do that. Yeah, because they put it on the ballot, right? Yeah. What? 
Well, that's the one thing we should do then. True. Next year, Maybe. put it on the ballot and see what everybody says. That's true. Yeah. That's we, right. I mean, we do the way that over the years the town report has developed. If you want to know what's happening in town, if you take a copy of the town report and leave it in your living room or by right. your bed or something and read through it over a period of time, it really, in, including all the financial stuff, really is, um, I, I remember way back in the gym trying to figure out the finances was, I, yeah, right, but that is no longer difficult to do with the way the budget is laid out. And I think know? that's why there and was not any questions because everything is right there and yeah. so clearly labeled. Yeah, you know, so I, I when I get done, you remind me and I'll play you a message I got. Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, I won't mention no names on it. Don't back the box. He knows who he is. I was wondering if it was a fluctuation and that's used as a gauge. That's how it's been decreasing every year. So we order it less and less and less. So you do it down. Of the town report? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we started at like 1400 six, seven years ago. And then the voters, um, we voted to that's right. nail. We were mailing them or distributing. That's right. We stopped that about six years ago now. I and I that. get a postcard. And that yep. so I do want took to a lot of waste out of the landfill. Yeah. I think yeah. is what was yeah. happening. People are getting them in their mailbox yeah. and yeah. And just throwing sending them. them. So we we're down to 500 now. Oh, that's all. And we had yep. we had almost a hundred left over last year. So we'll let a couple of weeks go and Krista will do a new count because I said, you know, keep track of what your boxes and don't don't lose track of it. But We'll count it up again to see if we can go down to four hundred next year. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like thirteen hundred dollars for the five hundred. I think is what the cost was. It was almost as much to mail the postcards as it was to make the town report. Oh no kidding! So I told Chris, I said, you know, this is getting low enough in quantity that we do almost all the editing in house now. So we used to farm out the editing and proofing, but with software upgrades, we can produce the town report on that computer. Oh we, no kidding! Yeah, yeah, so it's all. The in-house stuff has gotten easier. So it used to be a big production. It took us probably about 10 days of work to produce the town report. That was between me and Krista and uh, proofing by you know uh, Justin and Jeb. And then getting the edit back. You know, so there's a little bit of back and forth on the proofing, which takes time, but generally if we if we get down any more in quantity, we can almost do you need a copy or we'll run one off for you? Yeah. A lot of people go right on the homepage and get it. And yeah. that's people are, you know, yeah. as as the screens have gotten bigger and the portable yeah. device, people yeah. can almost read it like a book sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. The iPads are big or... enough, they're almost like book paged now. Exactly. For a lot of people that have those things. So right. anyway, so things are changing in that digital world. And yeah. eventually we'll we'll maybe bring it all in-house and just run a copy for people that want it or go down yeah. to the UPS store and run off the 20 that we're giving out now. Exactly. So it's definitely different. We have to keep yeah. two copies in the town vault. That's the statutory minimum. Oh, okay. So we'll always have paper copies okay. for the land records. Yeah. But other than that, it's what people are asking. Everybody gets a copy if they want. Yeah. That's what they're asking less and less. Interesting. Uh, just a, a final town meeting. So after town meeting day, there's a couple of things that happens other than all the budgeted line items, knowing that they're moving forward now, even if some of the money's not going to be there till July. The two items that started to deal with the reserve funds, those can be transferred immediately. Those aren't a July one thing; they're an immediate okay. authorization to move the forty thousand okay. and the fifty thousand. Okay, forty thousand for the new the build the new reserve fund for buildings, non highway, non library, that has the forty thousand. The 50,000 in stormwater, stormwater we created a couple of years ago, and that gets revenue from the highway access fees. Okay. So there's money that's already going into that fund. This was the first time we could put money into mm -hmm. that fund. So the fund was already there. Under state law, all of those articles, one through 10 or 11, whatever they were, except for the ballot, two ballots, have a appeal period, believe it or not, at 15 days. Oh, okay. and so a person can petition to undo any of those if they di totally disagreed with the 50,000 for stormwater. I think it's a 5% petition within the 15 days, which is March 22nd. Okay. So after March 22nd, 
Jennifer will make those transfers from the other side to those reserves and that money becomes available for those projects that you talked about at town meeting. So just it was just a little tweak that we didn't want her to transfer before the appeal period. Right. But that's really it after town meeting day. Okay. So anything else is the what it was said, but those are the only action items that kind of came out of it. Okay. The fuel. The fuel, I sent a quick yep. summary email. Mark called today and said, you know, uh, the, you have a $3,500 second order, but the minimum is 45. And I said, I said, yeah, I know the minimum is 45. I was trying to get 45 plus 35 equals his 8,000 that he wanted to order. But then the supplier added on a $4,500 minimum delivery. So a couple of things would happen when you split. We'd have to order 9,000 mm -hmm. if you split the order. <laughs> The savings, who knows what the savings will be in a month or two months, something like that, before the suppliers say that towards the beginning of May, the summer annual price increase goes. It's a market thing, you know, mm -hmm. Memorial Day driving or whatever. Exactly. Which is it. Yeah. So there's a little bit of window in mid April where you still you lose the winter mix, which is a more expensive fuel mix for the diesel. And then you have a little gap before you get into the so the natural cycle of elevated per gallon for the summer driving season. So we could try to save some dollars on that second, but we have to spend more money because of the minimum, which we don't have that. We don't have that money now. So you'd have to be spending over in fuel and saving in that paving line. And the, uh, we have no idea what the savings will be. So it could be higher or lower in two months. So the trending is down or flat. And, and it could be 20, it won't be dollars, you know. So, in the example I was using, it was 20 cents drop if you're lucky. So, you save some money per gallon. But the difference on what you would have paid is, you know, under a thousand dollars if you wait, basically. But then you have to spend the extra thousand gallons to to get the 9,000, the 4,500. So, you so spend, just go ahead and buy all of them. I, I, I think there's a, there's a little, I want you to make that conclusion, but the way we ran the numbers, we're trying to figure out if we hit that number just right. I think the with those state of affairs internationally is probably more risk is going to go the other way. Yeah. If everything stayed the same, the projections are like this, but that's not taking into factor any other weird occurrence on the national. So right. the benefit is light. Uh, we also, um, we, we really do need to, focus on the big purpose of the paving money, which is paid on the center bond. So I'm not saying that a thousand gallons more is going to hurt that effort, but it still is helpful if we stick to the original 8,000 gallons at the current price, which is still almost $2 less than last year. Which is crazy to think about, isn't it? It lit, you know, made $2 higher last year. Yeah, and the prior time it was 287. So I don't, I don't know if we'll see much below 287 at all ever again. Yeah, probably not. Right. Right. You know, it'd be nice to see two dollars again for diesel, but three fifty-five is probably is, is how long is it? How long is you wake up? <laughs> <laughs> but that three fifty, three seventy-five per gallon has been around for eight months, six. It seems like forever when it goes the gas. It's, it's bouncing. Yeah, right in that three fifty to four or somewhere in there. Yeah. And it may just stay there. Oh, we are getting a big benefit from the ten thousand gallon tank, though, because we can get those bulk deliveries right. at about a dollar less a gallon. Yeah. So there is a benefit anyway, no matter when you order it. Okay, you got it. So Mark just needs to know in the morning, should he call up for eight or 45? This is what I'm going to pull up, I think. Yeah, I do. I okay. Do. okay, can I have a motion? Did you want to ask? Them to they do any oh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah it's, 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 it's only a motion because you're overspending by right. Right. 16,000 or, or right. the number I gave you last time. And I I don't see anyone down, but I might be wrong. I have been once or twice in my life. <laughs> That's it. It's about sixteen thousand seven hundred is what okay. we're gonna have to find from other okay, so other line items. The motion is to overspend by that. Overspend by sixteen seven. There you go, sixteen seven. Okay, we got a motion. We got a second. Savannah's gonna make her first motion. All right, I will make the motion. <laughs> I'm not a load, not wild spender. Okay, <laughs> I'll second it. <laughs> okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. 
I go to gas and put right on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right on. Okay. <laughs> Two boys and king. Um, this is a copy of a proposal from Du Bois King. Sport copy. Uh, at last organizational meeting for the Planning Commission, okay. the Town Planning Commission said that North High Park should be the area of focus for the town planning and grants, redevelopment, revitalization, and so let's put some time into that. So a couple of projects have happened since then, which are in process, including this one. One of them is the, this is a outshoot of their bylaw modernization grant, which they got last year, which is looking at uh, constraints on housing in yep. village centers. Yep. And part of that process includes envisioning how High, North High Park can be redeveloped so that the people that are living there can advise the planning commission on what they're willing or expected by the regulation. So in other words, if you say, we're going to change we, the housing constraint right now is everything's limited to two story buildings and we really need two and a half or three or we need a cottage apartment in the backyard or whatever how does that look from the street or how does the neighborhood change by that and that's hard to tell people it's, it's really it's almost impossible to tell certain people are just you can't look at a site plan and know what it means right. but you can show them a picture yeah and you can say here's the before current and here's what it would look like with 20 units behind the Heath Lumber Mill. Right. And this is what the sidewalk would look like headed down Ferry Street to the post office. So you can tell people that if you change a couple of things in your bylaw, this is more likely to happen because you're removing the constraint in the bylaw. Right. And people sometimes are afraid with that, afraid of that because they'll say, you're, you're changing this too much and the whole thing's going to look bad. Yeah. But the regulation bylaw modernization grant that's been going on for seven months now. Is getting to the point now where they're going to draft regulations and they want to be able to show the residents in North High Park what, what the regulations do, yeah. what, what yeah. they what the effect is. So in order to get over that hump of trying to tell tell people, which is right now just words, they use the consultants, which is Memorial County Regional Planning or Memorial County Planning Commission, use examples from other towns. So they have that in their uh, presentation that they're working on is what other towns have done. But they didn't have any North Hyde Park photo renditions, which is what this is about. They you know, Dubois King did do the crosswalk project. Yep. And in that crosswalk project, which we then used those renditions for grants and things, they showed the North Hyde Park coming southbound without the crosswalks and then with the crosswalks. And people are like, oh, so a little curb bump out with a green space and a sidewalk and a cross. That's how it all looks with this. And you're able to see that and you either get you like that or you don't like that but in the input that the planning commission gets on these things then they tailor the bylaw to either not allow that or maybe make it easier to do that or incentivize things like multiple units in the backyard of an existing duplex or whatever whatever the scenario is this this has four four visual representations of various properties Southern Gateway, Heath Lumber, uh, the fire district property, and one other one that are all sort of being talked about now as part of the North Hyde Park revitalization effort, but nobody knows exactly what the, what the potential is until these kind of things are done. So this project, which would be an add-on to MPG 22, which is the bylaw grant, would come from Economic Development Reserve or ARPA combination and uh, I'll let, the, let that report be done so that the consultants can use it with the North Hyde Park project that they're working on already. It wasn't part of the original grant. That's why it's coming. As it came out as an outfall of that work, but it wasn't in the original grant. And didn't we, did we, we designated some ARPA money to North Hyde Park, right? The water system. The water system. Water system's been designated, and we also got a grant, uh, $60,000 from the state to study a new wastewater system, right. which would be municipal. And we are pending a 
flood buyout program at 100C to buy those two houses on the west side of 100 North. Yep. So that's in process too. So there's a bunch of stuff from north to south that's all like in the planning stage that yeah. is going to start to make uh, it look like you could develop up there. It, yeah. Right. And potentially, totally and potentially with the new zoning bylaw, make things right. a little more dense, maybe, but right. be acceptable to people because right. that's how right. that's how they'll do that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So it's really hard to to we got to that stumbling block in the planning process of. Well, how's that going to look? And why are you showing something from Char Charlotte? Yeah. You know, people, sure, right. not that you couldn't try to do it in your head. Visual it's, 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 it's oh, way more. Than, it's all about visual stuff. Right. And people can say yay or nay to it is what exactly. the goal is. And yeah. once they say yay, then the planners that are drafting right. the bylaw can come up with the ways to go. Right. It'll exactly. give you some idea for your infrastructure, exactly. your sewer, your other, when you can run off, exactly. off the exactly. that type of thing. You know. It'll give you an idea what the cost will be for those. You can work them into your permits and other stuff like that as your issue. Yeah. So that that was the okay. So you said the water system has been designated in that type of funding for from the Argo money. Okay. What do they currently have up there for water system? I've never seen it up there. How many gallons do you have in here? Uh, their source is unlimited. They've never capped it. It's over like 700 gallons a minute or something stupid. Is it is, uh, drilled well or is it spring? Or is it, you know? uh, they have a well point, which I think is a shallow well. I don't think it's so drilled very deep. Just keep the state out of it and you'll be all set. They have a big, they have a big pump house, which is what the thirty-two thousand dollars from the ARPA money that you all approved right. is doing the design of the upgrade of the pump house. The system itself is getting into the 40, 40 year range, 45 year range. And they're expecting another grant for the construction that's going to be needed for that to keep that system running. But the pump house will be brand new. And, and they can get through this. They may take some of that type of money and put it into uh, uh, the water itself coming in there, make sure it's pure enough. So yeah, it, check the well out. It, it, it never, it never, because it shut down more town corners. They had enough for all the water. Roger sends in water tests. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And when you when you make it mandatory, when you, when you get these funds and stuff like that, it makes it mandatory you have to send that stuff in. Yeah. And when they did, they shut down some of their riches water wells that were coming in because there was sediment or some other stuff in it that the state didn't like and, and it just made it so much difficult now they're pump they're trucking water to the reservoir up there and during winter time and dumping it in and then doing it all day long it's costing my mom said some how many thousands per i backfilled below. all that up there what's that i said i backfilled all that up there yeah yeah i knew one but uh it's costing thousands of dollars every day. Wow. Okay, so you want to make sure whatever source you have for water is something that's going to be sustainable and exactly. And, uh, yeah. Right. Whatever you may have. Yeah, because yeah, they're right. They do already test every. I can't remember. Roger. Yeah. 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 Regularly, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the water's testing is good enough that they don't treat. Right. Wow. Really. Which is yeah. really good. Yeah, that yeah. is. And there's about 92 properties and 200 something people served. So you want to reserve your veins of water coming into it too, right. protect those. All it takes is one house exactly. being built in the sewer or some particles that are coming into it. It's gone. Right, That's right, right. That perfect water yeah. they've got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Okay, so we need a motion to. Well, where. Well, you got a question on the funding source. Right, where it runs from. The, you, do, you could practically do all ARPA. You could split it with economic development reserve from the Harvey Fund because that economic development is all. I think, I think, I think all you got the economic development fund. Yep, yeah, there's 18,000. So there's 18 in there? Yeah. 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 Well, that's what we're doing here. Yeah. I think so. This is, this is the foundation work to get to that. To get the economic right. development. Yeah. yeah. I take it out of the economic development fund. Yeah. So that would be the motion 55 of the economic development reserve. Okay, I will make that motion to fund the North Lake Park Village Center. Are we calling it? Photo simulation. Photo simulation. And we will take the 5500 from the Economic Development Reserve Fund. I'll second it. Okay. 
Any more conversation? Questions? Okay, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. And warrants are we're at least looking at them now, yeah. so we can rolling down this direction. Uh, minutes. Those were some minutes there, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Good job. How many pages was the big one? Yeah. Five or six. Yeah, that was yeah. Yeah, it was it the first one? I was like, okay, we'll do a very nice and simple. And the second one was no. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Um I think that they will uh they look good, I think, once they're posted, if people don't have some disagreements with things in them about everything. I don't remember everything that was said, so <laughs> it looked good to me. Um, no. So I will make a motion to approve the minutes from both 228 and 36. Second. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor, <laughs> dignify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Unit um, is Savannah. Savannah. I keep wanting to call you Shannon. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Savannah, are you abstaining from anything or are you oh, voting right. for? Because you, you were technically here for 28 there. and the six, was she? Not a member. But she wasn't a member. Oh, uh, so does she abstain? Is that yes. what you yeah. did on that case? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And. Not often. Yeah. When you y'all for chair and vice chair, do you have to abstain from that? From oh, for part? voting for myself? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. No, no. So I think we you don't have to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Feels weird. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> so well, just <laughs> just the just last week she well in the minute she would have because she was said oh, okay. yeah. oh right. Okay. Oops. Oh, there's the library one. Sorry. Yeah. She was here, but she wasn't here. Right. <laughs> there you go. That's sort of like yeah. <laughs> mine too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Good. Um, did you make the motion for the town warrants? We gotta accept the oh, the I will make a motion to accept the town warrants. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Got any other business? Got two quick things. Okay. And I have one. Okay. Uh, you want to go first? Go ahead. I don't want to step on your thunder if you had something good. That's uh, not too great. Um, <laughs> my computer is unreliable. Um, and I would like the town of Hyde Park to purchase a laptop. one? Yes, exactly. <laughs> With an actual, so I can do Zoom on this because I can't do Zoom on this computer. So that's why I have to go back and forth oh. and have him step in. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's all I have. Okay. <laughs> Do we have um special computers for security reasons? Purposes yeah. that we buy from yeah so, so yeah so I'll I'll get to that once okay on the computer stuff. So, uh related to that uh yesterday I met with Beth Boy, who is the chair of the Johnson Select Board, and she came in to sign the finally the interlocal agreement on a set of services. Brian okay. signed on okay. yep. Monday, Tuesday, yep. whatever, this week, <laughs> Monday. So both boards have agreed to work together on solving. Uh, I, I think the real problem was contracting to professional assessors is expensive and less personal than an employee. So the two towns said, can we can we fit the middle? If we don't have a board of listers that's actively doing the work of Title 32, and we don't want the semi-impersonal contractor buzzing in here at 100 miles an hour to check off their list and get on to the next town, 
what's the middle ground? Initially, we had started with the regional planning office being the person that would do multiple towns in the county, almost like a county appraiser uh, for all the towns that would be members and pay the uh, hours work each town. That didn't work in the sense of the number of towns, but Johnson and Hyde Park stayed into the end, and we ended up coming to an agreement to share a person. So Johnson would be the employer for all the HR and taxing and all that other business that any employee employer relationship has. Oh, okay. And they will invoice us for hours spent of those two people. So we have two assessors. One is the uh, the rookie. <laughs> uncertified unqualified under state definition gotcha select boards are required to hire a professional qualified assessor if you don't have a board of listers so johnson had eliminated their board of listers a number of years ago and we you know high park have kept the board of listers vacant but you're still required to hire professional okay. point. So it didn't matter what the vote outcome was. Right. Which is yesterday. what Matt Reed was doing, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's helping the hired assessor okay. as an assistant assessor, which which fits the the personal touch side. Yep. Right. So he's the local Hyde Park resident right. that will deal with any hot button issues or discrepancies between a, a shared a municipal person or just a whole technical issue where mm -hmm. the the shared assessor has no time to deal with it because he's a surveyor and he knows every road in Hyde Park and most parcels. Right. So he is a he's offering that as a volunteer service if there's a, a conflict. And I think he's going to do that. Beth Carrier at Town Meeting Day right. came up and offered the same thing. She doesn't want to be a lister, but she said she would rather have the assistant assessor role as a she was a professional appraiser right. during her career. Right. Right. For the same purpose, you know, if we're having a whole bunch of uh, problems with grievances and and the shared assessor needs some help, even just holding hearings, then Beth and Matt could come in and have some of that history in the local flavor of a Hyde Park resident, which is what you would expect from a board of listers. Yeah. So that's the hybrid that we came up with. Uh, related to the computer, there are there is a need on two levels, which. Johnson and Hyde Park have to figure out the assessor need because the assessors are 90% remote now, just like almost everything else. So you have to have the reliable software running capacity of a device that turns on when it's supposed to, runs the functions, has remote access, and can basically work from anywhere. But if it's a sketchy machine, then your, your workday is done too. So you, we're finding out that the old, even the old way of trying to keep computers going for six, seven years, is just not keeping up with anything. No. You end up spending half your day. Like two years, yeah, two years. Yeah, you, have, you end up having problems with service and customer service or even functioning. So we, we're, we're, we're trying to stick with the five-year replacement. That's the goal. But with Justin's position, he's a town and park employee on the board clerk, which has its own remote needs that he was talking about. And he has a new need for the assessor remote needs for the two towns, which Johnson and Hyde Park will have to work on as a separate device. So I'm envisioning two devices. Actually. Oh, okay. One device that's the town of Hyde Park's equipment gotcha. that okay. comes under our direct control as board gotcha. clerk. Gotcha. Okay. That he can carry around, go to meetings, log in, do all the stuff that he needs to do. And then separately would be sort of a shared piece of equipment between the two towns. And if he ever leaves that, that stays with the two towns. Gotcha. Okay. So that way we're not mixing the two. And, yeah. And no, well, that makes sense. Yeah. It's possible to partition. It is, but it's it's not quite ideal when the assessor stuff is going to have a different function, really, than minute taking and remote networking and things like that. So how much money you talk? I, I've got to talk to Johnson still at Nemric, which has the software to run the appraisal system, hasn't advised us on what a good device is yet for being out and about and, you know, should have a protective case if you're doing field data and all that other business that might be different than a laptop like I have, which is the, really the workhorse. I, that, that one was 2200, I think, and that comes set up with all the software, it comes up with the antivirus. It adds a per month charge so that the tech group can monitor it. So you can have an answer or an next meeting for sure. Well, Correct. yeah, right. on the, on the, I, and I'm trying to differentiate yeah. the, the Hyde Park one and Johnson one, I have to figure out still. 
because I don't even know what that is yet. It might be right. a Microsoft Surface 8, I think they just came out with, which is like a big iPad, iPad that runs the software better than an iPad. iPads aren't really set up for a lot of the software you know, yeah, for business. Yeah. But the one that we need to get them set up on here is, is what we can come back on the next meeting. We're already got a new desktop for Mark. He's running a 2015 model. Oh, but the, God. Jennifer won't even touch it. She, <laughs> she, she went up there to try to do the payroll system to yeah. try to log in. And she goes, I'm out of here. That is <laughs> <laughs> so so we're in the process of solving highways problem. And this, this is the last uh, laptop for Justin that we need. So okay. Problem, there's the money in the budget for this year has been spent. So we either have to use it uh, ARPA money. I was just going to say, ARPA or, money would be look at the budget in April. In April, we start to look at June 30 projected. Oh, budget true. Right, right, right. And there might be money in the budget to fund the, let's say, $2,500 budget or whatever it is for right. ramped up machine. And it's funny because you can go to you know, Home Depot or Staples or even Costco and see the 799 model mm -hmm. it comes with almost nothing right and by the time you get the speed and the memory yeah, right. and the software right. you spent the money you're back there so, so 28 I guess was okay okay right we'll have a cost by that so you go ahead and do it it's not like you look at least we're not going to give you marks <laughs> <laughs> This is the um, contract. If you're going to have a contract, Brian signed and Beth signed. Oh, the assessor contract? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I won't understand what it's about. On your, in front of your little places, very important. All members, current or new. Yeah. Right. Every year after town meeting day, Vermont League of Cities and Towns comes up with a training a refresher or training for new members. It's always good to go to these at least once, especially for new members, but also for existing members. And they'll give you the outline of what a select board member does, what the expectations are, some best management practices kind of stuff, some tips, whatever they whatever they do. It looks like there's two options for an in-person and a and a zoom link to the Whenever these training sessions come up, individual members can go on the VLCP website. They have like a registration page and they usually have a, what's your name, what's your phone number, what's your email. And at some point it'll be a drop down that says what town? check, no, what town. It's all preloaded with Hyde Park. Once you get through all that stuff, I think it's a bill me. You can even do it Zoom, huh? Yeah. They're, they're gonna, I think they, charge i don't see any price there sometimes they'll charge like 20 bucks or whatever i'll be traveling but if you're registering and you get down to the to the billing part if i think there's an option for bill bill me and they'll send an invoice rate to jennifer so you, oh, okay. you don't have to deal with the money right. there sometimes the web link is good too because you put that in your own schedule so they'll have the real one and then rebroadcast it i think on the web so either way so just a little encouragement there to do that uh, as a good good practice. That's all the other stuff I had. Okay. We're good? Are we good? Yeah. So surviving our first meeting? Next, next meeting will be the 28. 28, right. Are yeah. you traveling? I'm you? traveling. You're but traveling? I will be gone. But I would like to bring up then you know, I'll try to get you know be on Zoom, I think. Yeah. But um, I want to bring Mark in that one. I want to start talking to Bell. Fire and oh, right. I know. Oh, yeah. 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 But I I would start out with anyone. I don't know if this is the right time to ask you, is your dad coming back? It really is not right now. Because if we don't, we're gonna to have to advertise for that again. But we can just advertise. The job, and then fail. Yeah, I think I think you might want to get that one out sooner instead of waiting until the twenty eighth. Well, you guys, but it doesn't that's up to you. That's why I'm bringing this up. Yeah, yeah. but I wanted to bring Mark involved and. In, oh yeah, yeah. Know, but to make sure, because I said it would probably be the twenty eighth once we do it. 
the well budget but the passed. position doesn't start till july 1st right or no no we were going to try to get it going before oh, right? we, yeah. talk about that. we yeah. did talk about that so we did. And i don't really know uh the life of a contractor much you know a cdl guy or just a heavy equipment operator my impression was that during the winter there's less work and then at some point in the spring all the contracting companies and excavation companies get busy again and they're looking for help and are they going to be taking if we wait till april ad are they going to be taking the candidates from us versus us getting ahead of it with an earlier ad now you're the better that's what what's that earlier the better the contractor oh that's up yeah i would i would think so i would think, think, think about the contractor at this point in time they don't know what the future looks like right. so that's where you get your best bid best pros that they're going to feed no, their family right. right so i would think you and mark ought to start talking now and talk with ron and we ought to get the ad out as soon as possible okay I think that makes a lot of sense. And that makes sense to me, but I just want yeah. to. No, no, no. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. That was early. Yeah. Has and a um, job description on the 28th oh, yeah. for sure. We got to be talking about some miracle money for, for these places that we set people up, mm -hmm. emergency shelters. We're really not up to par on that. I mean, we have we got a generator, we got two buildings and stuff. Oh, because you said there's all those new requirements. There's the other things we got to do to make it a shelter. Oh, okay. That's your EMD hat. Oh, yeah. 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 Look at you. No, yeah. but I'm just saying, you know. Yeah. We 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 we're we're, we're there. Yeah. But there's just some other some other stuff we need to do. So no, it's it's it's. <laughs> you know, they're asking for a lot of this other stuff that, you know, that neither one of the departments have and. We're going to have to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If we're going to Our make priority. it an emergency shelter. Right. Yeah. Well, we should get a, so, a list of what they need and we know about what it costs. Well, I know and what they need right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then you get a, get a list well, and get that. Done. Paul Nesky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Part of what he wants. He's got a good idea. And that, would, really be a, does. that would be a great. To call to see if he was going to get in touch with Red Cross to go through the list of right. minimums. Yeah. Well, see, a good one is um, Nicole. I talked to Nicole about it quite yeah. a bit, and she said she'd be glad to give us a hand. Oh, okay. Because she's right into that. Okay. Yeah. Is this so, Nicole Chauvin? Yeah. Nicole Chauvin. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I really talked to her about it, and she, she'd help us. Yeah. yeah. But, um, that's something we got to think about. Yeah. Yeah. So we might put on the 28th agenda that, that yeah, we discussed that one. See what we need and get it going and get it done. And to be clear, are you waiting to advertise for the position until March 28th or after, or advertise mm -hmm. before? No, I think advertise as soon as possible. As soon as Rolly and Mark yeah. can figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mark so, pretty much got it. What he oh, wants. does he? Yeah. What he yeah. wants. All he needs to do is talk to Ron. Yeah, we have a job description. Oh, okay. We did like her. This week, come off this week. I can come down if you want. We had like 10 job descriptions done a few years ago. Yeah. Okay. So we, I think you're looking for a, a equipment operator. Basic equipment operator. Right. Yeah. CDO and all that good stuff. We're not looking for a mechanic. We're not looking for a greater expert, just an operator that can. You know, the mechanics, they, there's really nothing they can do with these charts. Less and less every yeah. model. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. No, it, you don't have the technology, the computers, yeah. the, all the right. programs. If they had the training, they wouldn't be here. But that's right. That's true. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. That's where all the, the big stuff is. Yeah. You know, all the computers are yeah. the data they need. Rick um Lavoyer said just to keep up with some of the stuff is every six months he's got to buy more for his computer. Oh, I bet. Yeah. yeah. Transmissions. Okay. Everything so yeah, we can advertise and everybody's fine with it. We can yep. just go for it. See what we can find. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it? Yeah. 
Motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. All right. No, no, no.